Welcome to Who Died Today America, where we honor the lives of iconic personalities we've lost. Today, we honor a captivating lineup of talents who've left a lasting impact on entertainment and beyond. Carol Locatell's passionate performances, Maxine Klibingitis's cherished presence, Christopher Gunning's unforgettable music, Care Failure's alternative rock influence and more. So grab a cup of tea, sit back, and join us as we pay tribute to these extraordinary individuals and their incredible legacies. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Who Died Today America to stay updated on the lives we've lost and the legacies they've left behind. Let's get started. Care Failure, a powerful voice and lasting impact on the alternative rock scene. The alternative rock world is mourning the loss of Care Failure, the dynamic lead singer and guitarist of the Toronto-based band Die Mannequin. Born Caroline Kawa, the talented musician was only 36 when she passed away, leaving a lasting legacy of powerful vocals and passionate performances. Care Failure and her bandmates formed Die Mannequin in 2005, going on to release two albums and three EPs, with their most recent work being 2014's Neon Zero. The band gained radio popularity with successful singles in 2008 to 2009 and toured extensively in Canada and Europe supporting acts like Buckcherry and Danko Jones. One of their most popular songs, Bad Medicine, from their debut album Fino Plus Bleed in 2009, showcased Care Failure's dynamic energy and unforgettable presence. Her untimely passing was caused by sudden organ and heart failure due to infections, as stated by her family in a statement to ET Canada. The news of her death was announced by Nathan Clearahue on Facebook, leaving fans and the music industry in shock and mourning. Chris Richards, who met Care Failure in 2002, shared a touching tribute on social media, describing her as a rock star with an aura like Chrissy Hind. He emphasized that she was always friendly and cool, without a mean or snobby bone in her body. Care Failure's genuine nature endeared her to her fans and fellow musicians, making her passing even more tragic. Care Failure's raw, powerful vocals and magnetic stage presence earned her a beloved place in the Canadian music community. As a vocalist, guitarist and bassist for Die Mannequin, she contributed immensely to the band's success and the alternative rock scene as a whole. Her music and spirit will undoubtedly live on through her work, leaving a lasting impact on those who had the privilege of knowing her and experiencing her talent. Tributes to Care Failure Carol Locatell, a passionate performer and lasting legacy in stage and screen. Carol Locatell, best known for her role as the foul-mouthed mother Ethel Hubbard in Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, and for her appearances in three films alongside Burt Reynolds, passed away at the age of 82. Locatell's career, spanning decades in theatre, television and film, leaves a lasting legacy and showcases her passion for performance. Born in Atlanta on December 13, 1940, Locatell was raised in San Mateo, California, and began her acting journey at San Francisco State University. She eventually left school to play one of the Pigeon Sisters in the first road company of Neil Simon's The Odd Couple. Throughout her career, Locatell worked extensively in Neil Simon's plays, appearing on Broadway and Broadway Bound in 1986, The Shadow Box in 1994, and The Rose Tattoo in 1995. Locatell's filmography includes notable roles in Paternity, 1981, Sharky's Machine, 1981, and Best Friends, 1982, all of which featured Burt Reynolds. Her unforgettable performance as Ethel Hubbard in Friday the 13th Part 5, A New Beginning, 1985, earned her a loyal fan base among horror film enthusiasts, and her genuine interactions with fans at conventions brought warmth to all who encountered her. Beyond her success on stage and screen, Locatell triumphed in her battle against tongue cancer eight years ago, continuing to act despite the challenges she faced. Her love for theatre was undeniable, as she had an innate ability to project her voice and captivate audiences. Carol Locatell's dedication to her craft, her memorable roles and her indomitable spirit will long be remembered by those who had the pleasure of witnessing her performances. Tributes to Carol Locatell
Tony Ko, a masterful musician with a legacy of versatility and innovation. Tony Ko, a British jazz and contemporary classical woodwind player, has passed away at the age of 88, leaving behind a legacy of exceptional talent and versatility. He was a key figure in the second half of the 20th century, working with prominent artists and bands, such as Humphrey Littleton, John Dankworth, and Stan Tracy. Coe's unique and idiosyncratic style captivated audiences and his fellow musicians, making him one of the most respected saxophonists and clarinetists of his era. Coe's sultry, smoky tone on the tenor saxophone and pure, sometimes contemplative clarinet playing showcased his range and adaptability. He could effortlessly shift between swing, bebop, and even the most abstract free improvisation. His work as a composer for jazz pieces, film music, and contemporary classical chamber works also highlights his multifaceted approach to music. Coe's unforgettable contributions to the soundtracks of movies such as Superman 2, Victor Victoria, and Leaving Las Vegas display his wide-ranging talent. His iconic performance in Henry Mancini's Pink Panther theme tune solidified his place in popular culture, and his long-lasting collaboration with British pianist John Haller exemplifies his ability to form deep and meaningful musical connections. Throughout his career, Coe consistently pushed boundaries and explored new genres. He worked with the Matrix Ensemble, performing pieces from the 11th century to modernist works by Harrison Birtwistle. His compositions and arrangements on Les Voix d'Itzasso showcased his global awareness and appreciation for diverse musical styles. In 1995, Coe's incredible accomplishments were recognized when he became the first non-American to receive the prestigious Jazzpar Prize. This honor led to the composition of his celebrated big band work, Captain Coe's famous Race Around, which was performed at the Jazzpar Awards Ceremony in Copenhagen. Coe's legacy will live on through his countless recordings, collaborations and compositions that touch the hearts of listeners around the world. His talent, versatility and innovative spirit will continue to inspire generations of musicians and music lovers alike. Tributes to Tony Coe Maxine Klibingaitis, a cherished presence and lasting legacy in Australian television. Australian actress Maxine Klibingaitis, best known for her roles in the popular soap opera Neighbours and the drama series Prisoner, passed away suddenly and unexpectedly at the age of 58. Klibingaitis's contributions to Australian television and her engaging performances will forever be cherished by fans and colleagues alike. Born in Australia, Klibingaitis made her mark in the entertainment industry with a variety of memorable roles. From 1983 to 1985, she played the much-loved character Bobby Mitchell in the drama series Prisoner. As the teenage punk, she became entwined in dramatic storylines, including a harrowing prison escape. In 1985, Klibingaitis joined the long-running Australian soap opera Neighbours as apprentice plumber Terry Inglis, captivating audiences during her six-month stint on the show. Klibingaitis's other notable screen credits include appearances in Home and Away, The Flying Doctors, and All Together Now, further solidifying her legacy in the Australian television landscape. Her final public appearance was at a prisoner reunion in Melbourne in 2019, a testament to her enduring connection with the show and its fans. Throughout her career, Maxine Klibingaitis brought passion and dedication to her work, leaving a lasting impact on the countless viewers who followed her journey. As we remember her life and accomplishments, we celebrate the indelible mark she left on Australian television and the hearts of those who had the privilege of knowing her. Tributes to Maxine Klibingaitis. Christopher Gunning a legacy of timeless music and memorable scores. Christopher Gunning, the renowned British composer who passed away at the age of 78, left behind a legacy of unforgettable music and memorable scores. Known for his evocative compositions, Gunning won numerous BAFTA awards, including one for his work on La Vie en Rose, 2007, the Oscar-winning biopic of Edith Piaf. In this film, Gunning masterfully incorporated some of the French chanteuse's songs, showcasing his remarkable talent for weaving music into storytelling. 
Another notable achievement was Gunning's sinuous saxophone theme for the long-running television series Poirot, 1989-2004, starring David Suchet. This iconic theme became a small-screen classic, resonating with audiences and contributing to the show's enduring success. Gunning's other BAFTA wins include his work on Porterhouse Blue, 1987, with David Jason and the evocative period drama Middlemarch, 1994. Gunning's talent for creating music that perfectly captured the essence of the stories it accompanied made him an invaluable asset to the film and television industry. His versatility allowed him to excel in a wide range of genres, from period dramas to crime mysteries. In addition to his work for film and television, Gunning was also a respected conductor. A photo from 2010 shows him skillfully leading an orchestra, exemplifying his commitment to music and his passion for sharing it with others. Christopher Gunning's music has left an indelible mark on the world of film and television. His unique ability to create scores that perfectly complemented the stories they accompanied will continue to inspire future generations of composers. As we remember and celebrate his life and achievements, we pay tribute to the lasting impact his music has had on audiences around the world. Tributes to Christopher Gunning. Morena Marjanovic, a resilient performer and spirited reality star gone too soon. Marina Marjanovic, a singer and participant in the reality show Couples, has tragically passed away after losing her battle with leukemia. Her ex-husband Manuel Zuri confirmed the heartbreaking news to Serbian media, describing her courageous fight against the disease. Marina's resilience and spirit throughout her journey will be remembered by her family, friends and fans. A Croatian singer, Marina had a vibrant life, often sharing her experiences on social media. She regularly posted photos of herself in various outfits and events, giving her followers a glimpse into her personal world. One of her last photos, taken on New Year's Eve, was a testament to her strength and determination. Marina's time on the reality show, Couples, further showcased her spirited personality and brought her a devoted fan base. As a talented singer, she brought joy to those who appreciated her music, and her lively presence will be greatly missed in the entertainment world. In the face of adversity, Marina Marjanovic demonstrated unwavering courage and a zest for life. Her memory will live on through her music, her time on couples, and the impact she had on those who knew her. Tributes to Marina Marjanovic. Simon Emerson a pioneer in world fusion music and inspiring collaborator Simon Emerson, who passed away at the age of 67, leaves behind a rich legacy as a trailblazer in the world of fusion music. As the founder of the band's Afro-Celt sound system and the imagined village, Emerson was known for bringing together musicians from diverse backgrounds and genres, creating a unique sound that resonated with audiences globally. Emerson's Afro-Celt sound system was an extraordinary blend of electronica, African instruments, and Irish traditional music. Over the years, the band's lineup included artists like Sinead O'Connor, Robert Plant, and Peter Gabriel, earning Grammy nominations for their album's release, 1999, and Further in Time, 2001. Their most recent yet-to-be-released album, Over, exemplifies the group's continued evolution. In contrast, The Imagined Village was a multicultural reinterpretation of English traditional music featuring an all-star lineup that included Billy Bragg, Martin Carthy, Eliza Carthy, and Jackie Oates. The band made a significant impact on the folk music scene. Their album Empire and Love, 2010, and their 2008 BBC Folk Award for Best Traditional Track with Cold Haley Rainy Night serve as testaments to their success. Beyond his bands, Emerson's extensive production work spanned multiple continents and genres. He produced albums for Manu Dibango, Tarika, Baba Mal, Show of Hands, and Spiro. His Grammy nomination for producing Baba Mal's Fire in, in Futa, 1995, highlighted his incredible talent as a producer. His love for nature and birdsong led to unique collaborations, such as producing ambient spa music for cosmetics firm Lush 
and a birdsong fusion project for the RSPB's Big Garden Birdwatch Scheme in 2022. Described by Billy Bragg as a visionary leader of projects that inspired many, Simon Emerson's lasting legacy lies in his ability to bridge musical divides and foster collaboration among artists. His innovative contributions to world fusion music and his unwavering dedication to cultural exchange will not be forgotten. Tributes to Simon Emerson. Bill Zemi, chronicler of celebrity lives and master of the intimate profile. Bill Zemi, celebrated biographer and Rolling Stone writer, passed away at the age of 64 after a long battle with cancer. Zemi was renowned for his ability to interview elusive celebrities, delving deep into their lives and revealing their most intimate stories. As a writer for Rolling Stone, Zemi's Midwestern charm and keen insights granted him access to a range of stars, from Madonna and Sharon Stone to Eddie Murphy and Warren Beatty. His candid conversations with these luminaries often peeled back the veil of their public personas, revealing the true people behind the fame. Zeme's talent for capturing the essence of his subjects extended beyond Rolling Stone, with his work appearing in esteemed publications such as Esquire, Vanity Fair and Playboy. In 2004, his exceptional skill in profile writing earned him a National Magazine Award. In addition to his countless profiles, Zemi authored biographies on Frank Sinatra, Andy Kaufman, Jay Leno, Hugh Hefner and others. His book, Intimate Strangers, Comic Profiles and Indiscretions of the Very Famous, showcased his ability to intimately understand the lives and experiences of his subjects. Jay Leno, whose autobiography Leading With My Chin was co-written with Zeme, praised the late writer for his ability to recall and shape stories. Cameron Crowe, in the introduction to Intimate Strangers, called Zeme the king of the first sentence, describing him as a tour guide who brought readers into the inner sanctum of celebrity lives with a mix of humour and poignancy. Bill Zeme's legacy will forever be remembered as a master storyteller who captured the lives of the famous in a way that was both intimate and revealing. His talent for connecting with his subjects and sharing their stories with the world leaves an indelible mark on the landscape of celebrity journalism. Tributes to Bill Zamey. Peter Day, a pioneer in visual effects and lasting legacy in science fiction television. Peter Day, who passed away at the age of 95, leaves behind a lasting legacy as a pioneer in the world of visual effects and science fiction television. With his groundbreaking work on the iconic series Doctor Who and his early contributions to the BBC visual effects department, Day played a significant role in shaping the genre's visual landscape and setting the stage for future generations of artists and storytellers. Throughout his impressive career, Day worked on 10 Doctor Who stories spanning three Doctors, including classic series like The Evil of the Daleks, The Tomb of the Cybermen, and Genesis of the Daleks. His innovative use of effects in these and other projects, such as the foam-spewing seaweed creature in Fury from the Deep and the striking visuals of the deadly assassin, pushed the boundaries of what was possible on television at the time and left a lasting impact on audiences and industry professionals alike. In addition to his work on Doctor Who, Day's talents extended to a wide range of television classics, including Dad's Army, Adam Adamant Lives, Doomwatch, Survivors, Out of the Unknown, The Goodies, Some Mothers Do Avum, The Stone Tape, and Shackleton. His ability to master various skills, such as art, pyrotechnics, design, sculpting, and electronics, showcased his versatility and passion for the craft. Peter Day's work on the seminal 1958-59 series Quartermass and The Pit further cemented his reputation as a trailblazer in the field of visual effects, as he assisted in designing and building The Martians and even made a cameo appearance in the series. His early career also saw him working as a scenic artist at the Arts Theatre in London and studying theatre design at Wimbledon Art School, demonstrating his lifelong dedication to the arts. As a key figure in the evolution of visual effects and science fiction television, 
Peter Day's legacy will undoubtedly continue to inspire future generations of artists, storytellers and fans. His innovative spirit, dedication to his craft and the indelible mark he left on the genre will never be forgotten. Tributes to Peter Day. Alexandra Tata, a trailblazer in French television and a legacy of exceptional broadcasts. Alexandra Tata, who passed away at the age of 94, leaves a remarkable legacy as a trailblazer in French television, known for his mastery in directing exceptional live broadcasts. Tata's enduring impact on the industry will long be remembered as he pushed the boundaries of what was possible in television production and enriched the viewing experience for audiences worldwide. Beginning his illustrious career in 1955, Tata became the go-to director for groundbreaking broadcasts, earning him the title of The Man of the Firsts. His impressive portfolio includes directing live broadcasts from the Aiguille du Midi, a submarine, the aircraft carrier Clemenceau, the Line of France, and a free balloon. Tata's innovative spirit and daring vision brought viewers closer than ever to extraordinary events and locations. Alexandra Tata's legacy stretches beyond just remarkable broadcasts. He played a significant role in capturing historical moments, such as conducting an interview with Martin Luther King in 1963 and broadcasting President de Gaulle's speeches and press conferences at the request of the Élysée. In 1974, he directed the cameras at Notre Dame de Paris for the ceremony of homage to Georges Pompidou, and in 1995, Jacques Chirac chose him to film the decisive debate in the second round of the presidential election. Tata also demonstrated a passion for various genres, directing the recording of prestigious plays like Timon of Athens by Peter Brook, The Satin Shoe by Paul Claudel, and The Bald Singer by Eugene Ionesco, with Jean Le Poulain. His production of The Damnation of Faust by Hector Berlioz received a European award in 1999. Furthermore, he was the first to recognize the potential impact of Scopitone in the early 1960s, filming 118 of them and inadvertently leaving a lasting mark on French television. As a visionary director, Alexandre Tata's legacy will continue to inspire future generations in the television industry. His innovative approach, dedication to his craft, and the indelible mark he left on French television will never be forgotten. Tributes to Alexandre Tata. Thanks for watching Who Died Today America. If you enjoyed this tribute, please give it a thumbs up and share with friends. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell for more inspiring stories. Leave a comment below telling us who inspired you the most. See you in the next video.